Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 15, 2013, and this is the Kane Kale Show number 106, where we learn to be better artists. Today is Tutorial Tuesday, and today we are going to be exploring how to set up a piece, how I go about setting up pieces, sketching and all that good stuff, but sometimes we run into the challenge that everyone likes to call Art Block. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about what Art Block is and how you, at home, can put some strategies into place to help you move along and get past it. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane because we've got a bunch of new awesome submissions. Uh, Sexy Ramon Flowers among some of them. Uh, lots of Jinx stuff. Uh, these awesome Emma pieces coming in from uh, Danny Hella. Danny Jella. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, that's uh, the blue Emma. As well as Tesiro. And then this awesome kid up here. This looks like something out of... This looks like a mix of... Borderlands and Skylanders. I, I like it a lot. So once again, thank you to everyone who has been submitting your art to the Facebook page. For those of you who have not yet come out of your shells, please come to the please come to the light side, right? Or the dark side, whatever you want to call it. We paint light here, so I guess you could call it, call it the light side. Alrighty then. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. So for many of you who checked out the Facebook post, you will know that I was working on working on this oh, working on this this picture of Lulu I'm doing another yordle basically to add to the poppy interestana pieces that I've been doing and I am working on the layouts and the lines for Lulu and I was hoping to get this done for today I mean getting the lines done and uh, let's go ahead and just jump into the timelines because I got that all set up for you guys and I'll show you basically how I came to this, right? That, that picture that you just saw is not how it started. In fact, I went through a bunch of different uh, iterations and a bunch of things that I didn't like. So here is kind of the first one. Um, you can see I usually draw things kind of big like that at first. And then, like, if I'm not really feeling it, I'll just kind of, like, shrink it down and push it to the side. And you'll notice the way that I'm working with this is I've just got a layer over the top, and I'm working with a light brush, a light brush. And I'm also working with a chalk brush. Because A, it gives me some good texture, some good texture, and B, it just uh, it makes it easier to uh, kind of like pull shapes and like see the picture within. You know, you want to work as as uh, as broadly as possible at the beginning. So this second one, I was starting to like a little bit more because you notice how a lot of my sketches is just a bunch of like it, it's all just flowy lines, right? It's just like hey, try to make a composition in a flowy image. And I'm not worrying about, you know, facial details. I'm not worrying about the details of the costume. It's just like, okay, here's her body, and here's her arms. And then, you know, she'll have, like, this hair, and there'll be cool little flow lines going back up and leading us back up to the character. So, but again, um, I was going forward with this one for a little bit. I was trying to figure things out, trying to pull some of the, the details out. You can see me trying to get the sleeves in there. But I wasn't really liking it. And very quickly, you're going to start to understand that I am going to be entering the zone of art block. And that is one of the most dreaded places you could ever go. Because what happens is you just you keep working on the thing, or you keep sketching it, you try to get past it, and you just feel like nothing's working. You feel like nothing that you can do can just like save the piece. And you almost feel like, oh well, I've wasted all this time like trying to get to this. I might as well commit to it, right? And try to keep going forward with it. But um yeah, I'll tell you how I ended up solving it, all right? Uh, how I ended up solving this is, because basically what I was trying to get with this was I knew for sure that I wanted her shoulder to be kind of like in front of her face, you know, kind of like cute-like, right? Because the way that I see uh, Lulu is like she's really cute, but she kind of like she kind of like lures you in and then she turns you into a muffin or, or a squirrel or something, right? She'll like, she'll like lure you in with like being cute or whatever, you know, have you, whatever she needs to do. And then she'll turn you into a muffin and then eat your guts out, right? Your guts will be filled in the muffin. That's kind of gross. We don't want to talk about that. But uh, <laughs> that was, uh, that's another story for another time. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so I was trying to get this thing with like her shoulder like up close to her face, but it just wasn't working. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, all right, fine. Uh, let's try it one more time. Let's just try to like lay it out again, you know, like sketch out the body, make everything work. But again, just nothing was working. And I was starting to get really, really kind of fed up and kind of ticked off, right? Because I was like, I am going to be showing people this during the daily. 
And this is going to be really embarrassing if I'm sitting here sketching like 10 different poses and 10 different ideas that don't end up going anywhere. And so I was like, okay, well, this one, this one's feeling a little bit better, right? She's kind of got her hand in front of the thing. And this is kind of like, this is kind of like a, one of the original sketches that I did for her. She's doing a very similar pose with like your hand out like that. But the reason why I didn't like this one is because it just felt really, I don't know, it felt really static and kind of boring. You know, it just, it didn't, it didn't, and it didn't have the shoulder in front of the face. It didn't have the cute shoulder in front of the face. So I was like, ah, okay, well, you know, we gotta, we gotta figure something out. So at this point where I'm just working and working and working, and you know, some of these sketches are okay. They're okay, but they wouldn't, they're not capturing that original vision that I wanted. And so what I decided to do to cure this art block, look, I even do another one. To cure this art block, in fact, I'll just tell you right now. What I did was I actually just took a break for 10 minutes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the secret. That's the secret of how you... Hang on. That is the secret of how you defeat Art Block. Whenever you are feeling like no matter what you do, it's just not going in the right direction, it seems counterintuitive, but the best thing that you can do for the piece and for your creative process is literally get up, stand up from your computer, and walk away. Walk away from the problem. Walk away from whatever you're working on especially when you're working creatively. Because A, I'll tell you a couple things that were going against me here. One was, I was like, oh man, well I gotta, I gotta do an early daily today, so I gotta get this thing done, and I gotta make it look good, and if I draw like, you know, like every sketch that came out that just didn't work, I was like, oh crap, now I'm time lapsing that, now everybody's gonna see that, they're gonna think I suck, and you know, all this stuff. And little did I realize that it actually doesn't matter, right? And it also taught me that, okay, so right there I said back and break. So I got to this point. I got to this point, and then I took that break, okay? Because nothing was coming out the way that I wanted it to. And uh, what I realized when I got back from that break was um, I got, like, the inspiration of what I needed to do, like the next step that I needed to take, and kind of refocus, refocus, right? And I realized that, you know, the, the piece is not... The piece is not so that way people can think that I'm perfect or so that way I can just slam out one sketch and be like, this is how you sketch. You just do it perfect the first time. You know, it's not about that. Really what the piece is about is taking the time to make sure that you achieve that final vision and taking a break whenever you feel like you're just not getting to it. And I feel like too often people think that because they get art block, they think that they're supposed to just push through it, right? They think, oh, it's just going to go away. It's just, it's just push through it. But really, what's actually happening is you're reinforcing, you're reinforcing like that stress that's going on in your mind that something is wrong and that you're losing time and you just need to push through it, right? But actually what happens when you do that, whenever you stress yourself out or whenever you try hard, right? Whenever you, you become a try hard when you're working at something creative, it always ends up not working. It just always ends up not being as good as it would have been if you had just been relaxed. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into where we got back from break. Now you can see the differences that happen. Watch what happens with my drawing style once I get back from break. Notice how I took everything off of the canvas and I started anew. So the first thing I did was I drew that right there, okay? So you see you got the shoulder in front of the face, and you got the face kind of peeking through, and then like a little bit of a cast shadow over the eyes so we can see that her irises are actually glowing. This was something that uh, I really wanted to show in the piece, right? So I went back to this. And now I'm starting to, to just work more freely. Look at how, like, it's just so, like, messy and just, like, figuring out lines and just figuring out flow. That one was with her looking straight at us, but I was like, no, I want her face to be tilted. So I just changed that a little bit. And very quickly, you can start to see the piece already coming together. This is basically the pose that we're going to be working with. And it just goes right down as soon as I get back from the break. But if I wouldn't have done that, I would have kept trying to figure it out or like try to pull one of those other sketches. I'm like, oh, maybe I can make this one work. And it just would have frustrated me more and more and more. And I would have ended up hating the piece. So don't do that. Take a break. Take a break, even if it's for 10 minutes. In fact, I should have taken more breaks after this point because I still ran into more problems. I still ran into more problems as I kept going. But I kept telling myself, no, I don't have time to take a break. I don't have time to take a break. I got to do an early daily today. I got to just get this thing done. I just got to get it done, make it look good, and just get it done. And there's a couple of ways that I could have avoided this. A, I could have prepared a little bit better and just like done this earlier. Uh, and B, I could have just taken another break, right? And realized that, hey, it, I mean, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't even look that good. Because eventually, I know that it's going to look good. That's the other thing. You got to... 
you got to sort of take, have confidence with yourself that you know what you're capable of and you know when you're really kind of, you're hitting that point. You know when you're hitting that point and, and getting the original vision of what you wanted, okay? So let's talk about what's going on here. So we got the, the arm going in front here. I'm liking that. I kind of like the face. It's still kind of cute, but there's still something that's not quite there for me. And I keep working with it, keep working with it. And um, this kind of goes back to what I just said about how when you work, uh, you're almost like in the zone. When you feel like you're really just like nailing it, right? When you get back from your break and you're like, yeah, this is just working. The, these flow lines are working. The face is looking good. The pose is looking good. All this good stuff. But um, but um, this is actually the opposite, right? Because the, these are opposites. Art block is one side of the spectrum, and then the other side is what you call being in the zone, right? That's what everybody talks about being as an artist, right? You always want to be in the zone. People always ask, how can I be in the zone more and, and not get art blocked? And really, the secret is, is that you have to take breaks. You really must take breaks. You have to get up. I do it every 26 minutes. I literally work for 26 minutes, and I'll get up and take a break for the rest of the hour. I'll literally rest more than I work, and it works really well for me. This one, this piece, I did not do that, right? I probably took a break for 15 minutes and then another break for five later, you know? And if I would have taken longer breaks, probably would have turned out even better. And as I go forward with it, I'm gonna make sure that I continue with that. But the other thing that I really like about working with sketches like this is, um, you notice how I just, I'll literally just lasso that head I was lasso this head and just like move it up. So like, oh, it looks kind of like she's like hunching down. It looks like she's like hunching her neck forward and it looks really weird. So I took the head and I just moved it up and it looked a lot more uh, natural. So now I got to this point. I was like, okay, this looks good. This is what I want right here. So um, and notice like her her face almost looks like she has like big eyebrows or whatever. But I just left it because like there's something about this expression that I like, and this goes back to another rule that I believe in for myself is that sometimes you capture things in the sketch that once you refine it, you oftentimes lose it. And so oftentimes I'll just keep this original sketch around so I can just compare it. Even though the face is completely different, the expression and the feeling that's within it, I really like it. So I try to make sure that I preserve that uh, to an extent, unless what I draw later is like better, or represents it better. So, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, the other thing that I got to talk about, being in the zone. Uh, a lot of people say, a lot of people have the false assumption that when you're working right, you should be under the, in the zone constantly, right? And this is another false expectation that I think uh, a lot of artists kind of think to themselves. They're like, oh, well, if I'm not in the zone constantly, I must be doing something wrong. Really what I've understood that, uh, what I've understood from the time that I've been working, you know, just on my own stuff and in the field professionally, is that being in the zone oftentimes comes after that break. It oftentimes comes after that break, and then what's more, it only lasts for about five to 10 minutes. And that's really all you need. That's really all you need to be in the zone because during those five to 10 minutes, that's when you're just laying stuff down and just things work perfectly. And then after that five to 10 minutes, you know, you can just keep working. Sometimes it's like busy work, sometimes it's rendering. I really don't believe you have to be in the zone to, to do rendering and all that stuff. That's just kind of like, once the colors and the lines are all down, you're just kind of like refining and polishing and all that stuff. You can almost go into another fantasy land while you're doing that stuff. You can be watching a movie. You don't need to be in the zone to be rendering, in my opinion. Um, but when you are laying down the framework, the foundation for your drawing, doing this stuff, it is absolutely critical that you are in the zone. So that's why I really stress that you guys should take frequent breaks and make sure always, whenever you feel like your piece isn't coming out the way that you want it to, Always sit back and ask yourself, is this is this hitting the original vision that I had for the drawing, right? That there's just a few key things that I really want to be in this drawing, and is this still hitting them? And if not, then I need to take a break, come back, re-envision it, restart it again. And worst comes to worst, there's been times where I've literally gotten to a point like this. I, I literally will be working like this, and I'm like, you know what? I just don't like it, and I'll just scrap it. I'll just chuck the whole thing and start over again. And really, you can't be afraid to do that either, because... You know, it's just like if it's not turning out right, it's just not turning out right. And sometimes you have to be willing to start over. Uh, granted, I really think you should try everything in your power to make it work, right? Like with this, I was literally considering just chucking the whole thing and starting it over again or just doing the daily on something completely different today and be like, oh, man, I don't want to show people this. This is so embarrassing. 
you know, just like all the mistakes and all the changes and everything I make and all, all the times I rely on the crutch of the lasso tool to like make my drawing look the way that I want it to. But um, I think it's just really, it's really important to understand that, you know, things take time and oftentimes, you know, a certain piece will come out just, just perfect, right? The poppy piece, it came out like I just slapped that thing down and it worked, right? The Tristana piece was a little more challenging, right? And now the Lulu piece is even more challenging because there's a couple things that I'm running into. A, I, I like the fact that Lulu can sometimes appear kind of like scary, almost like kind of creepy looking. And I wanted to portray her in a way that was like cute, but also kind of creepy. And uh, a thought that was going through my mind, and this is another thing that I think can contribute to Art Block, is what's everybody going to think about this? You know, are people going to like this? Are people going to respond to this? Are they going to think that I suck? Are they not going to believe and, and, and see the vision that I had and, and like it, right? And here's me again, like, I'm like, oh, this pose just looks so weird. So what I did was I just lowered the opacity and I just drew her body, right? Like, okay, is this body even making sense underneath the clothes, right? So I just drew this. I tried to make it look right, but what I didn't realize was it's like that that body does not really exist within like it didn't I didn't even have to do that because it was it was working before and basically all I did was just like a lower like like I lowered the expression of the of the pose and I just made it a little bit more stiff and I thought that, that was fixing it again I'm working under art block here look at how I mess this picture up look at how I just completely mess it up I'm like okay well maybe I need to do this face and kind of like mix this eyeball back in there and like make it work and then I compared the two, like when I was done, I was like, oh, it just looks so bad. And I couldn't see what it was. And that's me comparing all the layers together. So then, uh, once we get to here, um, I think I think that was it. I think that was all that I had. OK, so many of you might be wondering how the heck I got to this point. So um, I should have time lapsed the part with the the dress when I was rendering that, but eh, that's not that big of an important thing. So um, a couple things that I did when I got to the end of this was uh, I took another five minute break because I was like, there's still something about this that I'm just not liking. I just felt it was mostly with her head. It was all in the face, right? It was all in this general region here. How long have we been going for? Oh, we've only been going for 20 minutes. No, 15 minutes. Yeah, about that. Okay, so it was all just happening right in here. I was like, something, something is happening in this region here. I don't like the face. And for me, you know, the face is the most important part. So if the head and everything looks a little weird, I couldn't figure out what it was. And I always, I always try like flipping the canvas, figuring out what it was. And then I kind of like, I kind of just checked my. I guess you could say fundamentals or just like one of the biggest things that I really think is important is when you draw the head. Like sometimes I did this. I actually drew the head underneath the hat. I was like, okay, how the heck is this head even existing? Right? Okay. It's working like that. Okay. And then the neck is coming down like this. And then the neck would have to be kind of like that. And then the back is over here. And that's when I started to realize, oh, I think that's the problem. It still looks like she's hunching her neck forward. So it looks like she's doing this. Right? And I want her to be like this, right? With the shoulder here and then her neck back. So what I did was I literally just lassoed the entire thing. Just lassoed her whole freaking face like this, right? Kind of picked a, a spot kind of like that. Grabbed her head like that and the whole hat. Let's make sure we kind of get that nice and clean. And then what I do is I control C to copy it, delete it, <gasps> decapitated Lulu. Ah, scratch my nose in approval. And then what I did was I just figured out, okay, oh, so I just need to move the head back a little bit. All right, because I'm thinking about thinking about the neck. The neck comes off the back, right? It's supposed to come up off the back like this. All right, it's not supposed to like come up off of here, right? Which is what it was doing before. So that was basically how I went about fixing it, as I just moved the head back to the point where I was like, okay, that looks a little bit more natural. That looks nice. It might look weird to you, I don't know. But all I know is when I did that, I was like, okay, that looks more natural with her head back. And that was it. That was basically all I had to do. And I flipped it back around, and that's where we got to this point. And usually, uh, the way I can tell when I've got something that's working pretty well 
is I just flip it back and forth. And if it looks good flipped, then it's probably going to look good the other way too. And this is something else that I did. Uh, sometimes a five minute break or a 30 minute break isn't enough. Sometimes, like in Tristana's case, there was a time where I was working on Tristana where I was like, this is something about this still isn't feeling right. And what I did was I decided that I was just going to sleep on it. I just decided I was going to finish up the day. You know, it was, it was late in the evening. It was after the show. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to sleep on this tonight. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to look at this first thing tomorrow, and I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to make a decision as to whether this still needs improvement or whether I need to scrap the whole thing, start over again, or if I'm going to continue it, or if it just looks fine, you know, the way it is. And, you know, just go for it. And oftentimes, I really think that's the best thing to do. I think that when in doubt, really just try to just try to go for it, right? Especially after a break. Especially after a break. Um, you know, but this whole this whole mentality of uh, art block is something you just gotta get through. You gotta get through it. Uh, it's just, it's really bad. It's very po it's very poisonous, and it will destroy your artwork. It will affect your art, and it will destroy you mentally if you continue to try to push past it, because you'll be working in a stressed out state, and nothing ever good comes out of you creatively when you're in that state. And really, I think the best thing to do is just do do what you want to do, right? Do it in the way that you believe it should be. Right? Going back to the whole thing, it's like, oh, how are people going to respond to this more scary-looking Lulu? Oh, they might not like it. Oh, no, that would be the most terrible thing ever, right? But then I realized, no, but it's not about what they think. It's about what I want. This is what I like about Lulu. I like the fact that Lulu's like this. And so, you know, I'll still make her look cute, but I also want her to be kind of scary-looking. And, um, you know, and to heck with what everybody else thinks about it. I think that's another thing. It's, it's kick all the expectations out about what other people are going to think about your art and just do what you really believe you're supposed to do. Okay, so <laughs> month-long break might be a little bit too long, Dordua is saying. <laughs> the latest I say take a break is just sleep on it or a 30-minute break or just a day of a break. But don't, don't, don't do that. Don't go to the other extreme and take a month. That's bad. All right, guys, um, we've been going for about 20 minutes. So in this time, I'm going to ask you to question catapult anything that you have over the castle walls. I'll answer it, and then we'll end day 106 of the Cane Kale Show. Oh, man. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little character mask. Let's do a little character mask on Lulu, shall we? All right. And that's going to be very easy. Let's just do uh, Char Mask. Char Mask. Not Charmander, Charmask. All right, let's invert that sucker and fill it. Boo yeah, baby. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Slowburn is asking a great question. He's asking, what's the best way to paint a character without having bold line art separating each part for a more realistic look rather than comic-y? I just always look kind of dodgy on realistic stuff. Uh, slow burn, this is a great question. And this is something that I've gone into uh, a couple of times about kind of uh, blending the lines. I think if you search blending the lines on my YouTube page, you should find something that goes into that. But basically the best way to consider uh, painting out lines, and I'll show you just kind of quickly here, is think about contrast. Think about contrast, and that's basically all it is. It's because, okay, this line exists here, but if the color, like if this whole area was just colored that way, then the contrast between this and this now becomes a line, right? And there doesn't have to be a solid, you know, there doesn't have to be a solid black line going through the center of this to say, oh, hey, yeah, this is where this color exists, and this is where this color exists. See what I'm saying? And that's basically how I go about doing that. So say after I color this entire character, um, I'll actually go in and I'll color the lines as well. And you can see me doing a little bit of this on Tristana and Poppy. And this is basically how I start doing a realistic thing. But I wanted to keep a little bit of the lines in there because I kind of like it. But um, that's basically how I go about doing it. So think about in terms of contrast, letting lines appear because of shapes. Let the lines appear because of shapes and contrast as opposed to actual lines. All right, all right. Uh, people are asking, please do some more early streams. People are liking 
early streams. It's nice to see me live in Europe. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so I guess this is a good time for European people to watch me live. Um, yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah, I'd love to do some more early times. Uh, my only like my only reservation about that is I don't want to do it too often because I really like to be consistent, right? And we usually do it at seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time. But um, yeah, I mean, if it doesn't bother you guys that much, and I mean the things go onto YouTube afterwards, I guess we can do that. All right. Um, last question is coming in from NCAS. Hi, Mr. Jello from a lot of dailies ago. Uh, he's saying, I want to ask you about setting up your values. Where is a good time, or wherein there's a good balance between lights and darks? What would you say if something is too dark or too light? Oh, when setting up values. Huh. Huh. Good question. I don't know exactly how to best, like, describe or answer this right off the bat, but um, I think, okay, well, for values. Values, I think, is a very interesting thing. And you can know if your values are too dark. I don't even know why I pulled this up. I can't really describe it there. But um, or maybe I can. Maybe I can do something. Hang on. Hang on. I got it. I got an idea. I'll pull something up here. Um, and while I'm doing this, I will say that I think that values really, what makes good values for me is having a good balance. Right? You don't want to have all just like all just muddy darks and all just like too bright, right? Uh, unless that's something that you're trying to, you know, put through with a with a, a picture or whatever, or like the feeling of the painting. This is really hard to try to find something and talk at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Tristania. Let's go ahead and take a look at her. So let's go ahead and kick her values down to just black and white. So notice how you know there's there's lots of there's plenty of darks, right? And there's also like white whites. And I think that this is something that's very good to do. And it's really easy to talk about values when your background is white and your character is dark, right? Because that's another thing that's really important with values. Is if you're drawing a character, like don't let the background be the same value as your character. Like, for instance, like if the background was all gray like this around this area. Right? See how it's much harder to like pick out the edges of Tristana here? You know, it's much harder to pick out the values here because they're the same. And so in that case, if I was working with a darker background with Tristana, I would be sure to either have some sort of rim light happening along the edges here to really distinguish the edges, or just make Tristana's values herself lighter. And uh, that's probably the best way that I can describe it for now. All right, but maybe we can do another tutorial on values specifically. I want to do some more about that. I did I did one on thumbnails like a few weeks ago, or no, not weeks. It was like months ago. But uh, we can definitely go into some more of that. All right, you people, we're gonna end today's show. Thank you for your awesome questions and for joining me live on Twitch and our early stream. Uh, you guys have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow for whatever Wednesday. We're probably gonna be working some more on Lulu. So prepare yourselves for that. Until then, you guys take care. And of course the music is not playing. <laughs>